Hey everyone, it's Stephanie Wong back again. I'm a cloud developer advocate and I am thrilled because we have Eric Brewer, our Google fellow here with me again today. We are doing a series of videos and we are talking about Google Kubernetes engine for next gen developers. Eric, welcome back. Great to be here, thank you. I wanna talk about some of the most common questions that both you and I, and I think a lot of us here at Google Cloud have gotten, the first being, what is the difference between Kubernetes, that is Google Kubernetes Engine in particular, and serverless? Well, they're both the future. <laughs> so in that sense, they're easy to get confused. But I would say the main difference is Kubernetes and GKE in particular are really great platforms for building a wide range of services. And that's really the key. You can build all kinds of services on top of Kubernetes and GKE. Serverless, especially classically defined, obviously means no servers, but it usually means functions as a service or request reply patterns in particular, like websites. And so that is an example, one of many, of a kind of domain-specific solution. And in general, when you have a domain-specific solution like Cloud Run, you could do a fantastic job for that domain that is much easier to use than Kubernetes. So if you know exactly what you want to do and it's opinionated and it's narrow, you should build that as a platform as a service. If you're going to build all kinds of things, like you're an enterprise, Kubernetes is the great base for that. And in fact, I see lots of enterprises building internal platforms as a service of various kinds on top of Kubernetes. And that combination makes a huge amount of sense. Okay, so it sounds like if you have a specific use case that serverless products are well equipped for, then absolutely go with that. But what about in the case where you might start with a serverless product like Cloud Run, Cloud Functions, et cetera, and then you decide later on that, you know, we are fully bought into Kubernetes and we would like to broaden our use cases. We want to build platforms on top. Is it possible to sort of have both in your environment? Uh, lots of customers use both today in, in various interesting combinations. Uh, there are certainly customers that started out on App Engine or Cloud Run and have moved to Kubernetes because they want finer grained control over all the details. That's one reason. And in fact, they're rebuilding kind of a customized platform internally for themselves. There are other groups that use something like Cloud Run for the front end services and use Kubernetes for back end services. That also makes a lot of sense because you can do a lot of data management control in Kubernetes. There are groups I know of at least one that uses both for a different reason, which is they have a Kubernetes cluster that does their main load. But when they have you know, a hotspot like a Black Friday, they actually use Cloud Run to absorb the spikes. And so there's lots of ways to make this work, really depending on what kind of cleverness you want to play to, to mix these together. But they're definitely, they work well together and you can start on Cloud Run and move to Kubernetes later is another really common pattern. Well, here's the thought. So we've talked about this a little bit in our previous videos about how platform teams want to use Kubernetes, and yet they also want to customize their platforms for their needs. Uh, we talked about policy enforcement as an example. So how should an enterprise use Kubernetes Engine? Well, in general, a, a cloud provider offers more things than a, you really would like your developers to use. And what I mean by that is if you're an enterprise, you have a platform team uh, and you say, oh, we're building this kind of financial service. We really don't want to give our internal developers all possible abilities. Like we don't really want them to be in charge of their own credit card transactions, for example. Because that's a highly regulated thing. It needs to be done very carefully with careful audit logs. And so really what I'd like to do is give my internal developers a platform where they can do credit card transactions that are guaranteed by the structure of the services to be compliant with all regulations. And by the way, in all different countries in which we operate. And so I see Kubernetes is the way to build these customized platforms where they enforce whatever rules the enterprise cares about through things like control over project creation, control over the nodes you use, control over the OS you use, control over the libraries and repos you pull from, right? Those kinds of background controls are things that are not typically up to the internal developers to, to decide, but at the same time provide services framework, possibly something like Anthos Service Mesh to manage services across these things and give their developers, again, the productivity that you want and the velocity of features, but again, in a way that's decoupled from risk around certain features that are highly regulated, especially. 
Yeah, and it sounds like there is very much a culture and organizational structure in place in which you have your operators and administrators and your developers. Uh, now, we do have a lot of curiosity out there in the community about, you know, advice for these next generation of Kubernetes developers, and we've actually collected some of them. Uh, I know that you threw out a prompt for AMA questions on your Twitter, and so did I. So get excited, everyone. We are going to come back in the next video with a handful of those questions. So stay tuned, and thank you so much, Eric. Looking forward to it. Thank you.